Good morning. It's Mr. Kreitch, and it's Physics 12, Electromagnetism Part 2, and the final online lesson for 2020. Lesson 11. Just going to talk about motors, speakers, and microphones, and all sorts of things like that. What I've got here is a wire. It's actually a coil. It's just got one loop on it. And this wire has electrons going up on this side, around the top, and then back down. If that wire was aligned something like this, so the electrons going upward here and then downward here. So the electrons are going upward here and then downward in here. Then this wire would move if it was in a magnetic field that was pointing into the board. So what I mean is, if I had this wire here and I had electric field going this way, that wire with my left hand has electrons going up, it has magnetic field going in, and that wire would get pushed that way. On the other hand, this wire here has electrons going down, magnetic field that way and that wire at the back would get twisted that way. So it's a double whammy. This one gets moved in that direction. This one gets pushed that way and we end up having a motor. So electricity in the presence of a magnetic field will cause the wires to twist. So the only problem is if we had this wire getting twisted in that direction, so that wire gets pushed that way, this wire gets pushed out, so we ended up having this getting that way, then when this wire comes over to here, if it could, then it's got electricity going down. So if you had electrons going down in the presence of a magnetic field, that wire would get pushed back that way. So what would happen is we'd have a wire being like this, getting twisted here, and then coming rocking back again. That's not what we want. So what we need is something that could change the current so that if we originally had um, electrons going up in this wire, and that wire was here, that wire would get pushed this way. And when it comes to here, we need something to cause the electrons here to go upward too. And that doesn't normally happen. But in a DC motor, they created something called a split ring commutator. And that does make the current change. Good thing about alternating current, the stuff that comes from BC Hydro, it does change 60 times per second. So you can get a motor turning and having electricity changing, the, elect the electron flow direction changing 60 times per second. So you can have a motor turning constantly all the time. One thing scientists noticed a long time ago was that if you didn't have electrons flowing in a wire, but you just had a wire and you moved it in a magnetic field. So we took this wire and we turned it that way. If you turn that wire in a magnetic field, you create electron flow. You create current in the wire. So all you have to do is push wire in a magnetic field and it'll cause electricity to be produced. That's called induction. It's what happens in a generator. So the only thing is though, if you were to have this setup that we had in the first place and you were to have electrons going this way in that wire and it got pushed magnetic field this way and that wire got pushed that way, this one got pulled out then now you have a wire moving in a magnetic field and that should cause electricity. So the, if you were to think about it, if you had a wire moving in electricity or in a magnetic field, it'll create electricity. Will it add to the electricity that you had in the first place, making even more electrons flowing, which makes an even stronger twist, which makes this thing go out of control. And that's, that's not the way it works. What does happen is if you have uh, electrons flowing in that direction, in that magnetic field, 
it'll cause a twist of the wire, but you've got current going in that direction. What happens is as it twists, it creates a what's called a back current or a back EMF or a back voltage that makes electrons go in the opposite direction. So as soon as you start to twist the wire, it creates electricity in the opposite direction of the electricity that you're using in the first place to get the motor going. And what mean what that means is that the motor can only hit uh, what's called a terminal speed, terminal um, velocity, if you want to call it that. It can't go faster all the time. What would happen if you had current in this direction causing the wire to turn, and because the wire turns, it makes more current in this direction, this thing would spin out of control and go at the speed of light, and that is not possible. So as soon as you put current um, or electrons moving in this direction in this wire, as soon as it starts to move, it generates an electricity in the opposite direction to try and slow down the wire from moving. Sounds like the law of inertia. Could you imagine this fan, if I turned it on and it's using current to turn on, if it, because it's turning, it generated more current in the same direction, then it would cause the fan to go faster and faster and faster so that the blades would be actually going at the speed of light. And that's impossible because E equals mc squared. You can't create enough energy to have this thing go at the speed of light. So when we had the motor moving in the first place, we had electrons moving up, magnetic field that way, and it caused the wire to turn this way and the one behind went in the opposite direction. With the, as soon as you start to move the wire with the uh, idea of uh, generator and induction, as soon as you move that wire, it'll cause electrons to flow in the opposite direction. So if you were to try and figure out what the electron direction would be from induction, from uh, this thing becoming a generator as soon as it starts to move, it causes electrons to go in the opposite direction of what your left-hand rule would predict. This whole motor generator system is really quite useful and we use it on things like uh, the Tesla car or any electric car. If you've got a motor and it's turning your wheels, you put electricity into the motor and it causes the wheels to turn, as soon as those wheels are turning, they're making current or uh, electron flow in the opposite direction. If you were to stop pushing the gas down, if you want to call it that, if you're not trying to accelerate the car anymore, as soon as you take your foot off of the accelerator pedal and you need to brake, then all of that electron flow, which is going in the opposite direction, because that was what happens when your wheels start to turn. They create electron flow in the opposite direction of what was coming from your battery. Then those electrons that are going in this direction will end up recharging the battery. So when you put on your brakes, all of these electrons that are going in that direction will go right back into the battery to charge it back up. And that's what happens. It's called regenerative braking. So if you didn't know before, now you do. The opposite of a motor, or a motor running in reverse, is called a generator. And a generator running in reverse is a motor. By the way, an alternator in your car, uh, your normal car, gasoline car, is a generator. It actually gets moving because your car is moving. And as it's moving, it creates electricity in the opposite direction from what is coming from the battery and it recharges the battery. Just taking a look at this right now, um, if this was a motor, again, a motor would turn that way and it would make electricity that way, which would be called a generator. If this was a speaker, then current um, or electron flow in the speaker wire causes the speaker to go boom, boom, boom against, uh, looks like cardboard or something, something that pushes the sound waves out and 
if you instead had the cardboard and you spoke into the cardboard, it would cause the wire to move a little bit, which would cause electricity to flow, which would be the electrical signal that's made by a microphone. So basically, a microphone is a speaker in reverse, and a speaker is a microphone in reverse. The wonderful thing about alternating current is that you can constantly change the magnetic field to create electricity. And the cool thing about that is you can do things like step up the voltage or step down the voltage, and that really helps in the transmission of electricity from a dam, for instance, to a subdivision. Look at one simplistic example. If it stay falls down, they had power being generated. Uh, the power may be 480 kilowatts. Uh, it's more than that, but just we'll say that is the case. And the power from the dam all goes to just your subdivision, and your subdivision uses 480 kilowatts. The power from the dam equals the power in your subdivision. What they do is send the voltage, the uh, power I should say, from the dam at a very high voltage because they find that the higher the voltage, the lower the current because power is volts times amps. If you can send it at a high voltage, you've got a low current. And if you have a low current, then you don't have much heat energy loss in your wires. So what they do is ship it at a very high voltage, low current, and send it all the way down Dutney Trunk to our subdivision and eventually it has to get stepped down from 480 kilovolts to 240 volts at your house. What I've drawn here is a really basic transformer and it'll illustrate the story that we're about to tell. Here's a little bit more detail of what this transformer looks like. This could be a transformer like the one in the green box in your neighborhood or a much bigger version of it would be in the substation, like the one near the old Coopers or the one around 216th and Dudney Trunk. And just a little bit more detail. That is the equation that we're going to be using in a moment. And just to remind you, transformers work only with alternating current electricity, like the kind of electricity that comes from BC Hydro. They don't work at all with direct current electricity. And that would be like the uh, type of electricity coming from your battery in your cell phone or the battery in your computer. And we have voltage coming from the dam that's 480 kilovolts or 480,000 volts. We need to step it down to 240 volts at your house. And from the dam we've got 480,000 volts and coming down to the house it has to be 240 volts. Is if we had, say, five loops in the transformer at the house subdivision, at the green box outside the house, how many loops of wire would be in this coil in the transformer, the coil coming from the dam? And if it's coming from the dam and going to the house, we really should change this terminology. It's really coming from the primary coil to the secondary coil. It doesn't really matter what you call them. You just have to know that they're two different coils. But technically, if it's coming from somewhere, that's the primary. If it's going out somewhere else, that's called the secondary. Just putting in the numbers, we get an equation that looks like that. Algebra correctly, you end up with a N of the primary, the number of loops in the primary coil of 10,000. And there's an inverse relationship for current. And it's shown in that formula here and that one here, if you ever needed to find current. 